Preview. Preview. Nibiru is near. That's how he describes Elenin. Now, he said that he saw the discovery and the news about this 50 years ago on the cover of, of a science magazine. And you can click on that link anytime, and it will open up a new window, and it will pause this window, and you can come back here and listen to the rest of this if you have a mind to. If you want to just go there and watch that, that's good enough. That magazine that he's referring to said that there would be a wave at least three miles high on all three coasts. Now I'm counting the east coast, the west coast, and the southern coast, Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida. So if you have a three mile wave coming in on all three coasts, anybody who lives within a hundred miles of the coast is toast. <laughs> it is clear by now that those people who control this information don't want you to have the truth. Or at least, I'll say, to give them the benefit of the doubt, I'll say they can't afford to let you know the truth. But when you see it in the sky, then all the speculation is done. Because there it is, right there in the sky. Now, where is it going to come in from? Well, the sun is pulling it in. So if you want to know where it's at, you look toward the sun, and if it's behind the sun, there it is. It should be somewhere close to the sun as it's coming in. Now it's going to whip around the sun and then go back out. And so it will go out pretty much the way it came in, only on the other side of the sun. Does that make sense? You have to consider that the sun pulls this thing in like a magnet and it swings around and goes around the sun it does not collide with the sun it goes back out it'll be back in 3600 more years now we have historical record that shows that this thing has come in in the past it was called many names the destroyer wormwood nibiru it's called planet x today as one of the popular names for it it was called Nemesis. I didn't know that until I read the Pleiadians report. I mean, Wendell Stevens' report about the Pleiadians. You have this object that comes in. Now, this guy saw it, and his testimony is valuable because he and the CIA, he has buddies in the CIA, they watched it together for decades. And then finally, their line was cut. So when I say they don't want you to know the truth, and then I qualify that by saying they can't afford to have you know the truth, you have to consider that if the people knew, they would flee the coast on all three sides. Everybody living in the south would move north. Everybody who lives on the east coast would move west, and everybody on the west coast would go east, and you'd find a jillion people in uh, Missouri and uh, Ohio. This is not good because those states cannot handle a jillion people. There would be no place for them to uh, lift up their hind leg and take a pee. We have to be realistic about this. So I fully understand the secrecy. I just envy those who have underground bunkers. And... Uh, if you guys didn't get your ticket, well, I'm sorry. There wasn't that many to go around. I got mine. I'm just kidding. I never got one either. I'm out here like a dirt bag just like you. So if everybody moves from the coast, how easy would it be to sell your house and get all your equity out if a big wave is coming in? Nobody would buy your house if the truth was out. It has to be speculative. Now... The rumors will send the wise inland, <laughs> away from the coast, and the rest of you can bake in the sun. Who cares? I care. That's why I'm making this video. I would like to see every wise person surviving, and that means you've got to relocate now if you trust that this thing is coming in. Now, this guy gives his testimony. Listen to it and decide. Is he telling the truth or is he a crazy man? If everybody tries to sell their house and they can't, there are going to be some losses. All that equity will be lost. What would the losses be 
in home equities alone. People work their entire lives to pay off the home, and then they read that a three-mile wave is coming in and it's going to wreck their home. Well, they try to salvage whatever they can. They try to sell it to some sucker who doesn't know the truth. If this turns out to be the truth that this man is reporting. Now, I don't have any way to determine if he's telling the truth. I listened to his story. I think he's credible. But I thought Drake was credible. And then he starts talking about Nasara. I thought Benjamin Fulford was credible. And then he starts talking about $12 trillion bonds that were offered to him by the Queen. <laughs> this is hysterical. <laughs> this isn't reality. This is hysterical. This is, this is comedy writing. If 80% of the people of Earth live within 100 miles of the coast, where are they going to move? 80% of 7 billion is uh, 5.6 billion people homeless, jobless, and wandering around looking for something to eat. And they want to know if they can use your restroom so they can rest from wandering around. I think it's pretty obvious why the governments all over the world cannot afford to let you in on this private secret. You're just going to have to die. Now, is that bad news? Of course it's bad news. What did you think it was? Good news? <laughs> People say, why don't you be positive? Well, the truth is sometimes not that positive, is it? It would be better if you know than if you don't know, because if you know a little bit in advance, you have time to prepare, maybe. Maybe. I think you deserve a little bit of a chance. Most people are going to call this man a crazy man. That's good for you. Listen carefully to what he says. If you don't think he's nuts, and you act and the other guy doesn't, you might be able to sell him your house. <laughs> Anyway, the government has to keep this a secret, and I think the people have a right to know, even if they abandon their homes and try to survive. But I don't own those big banks with all those mortgages, because this will collapse the entire banking system, especially those banks that hold the mortgages. But there will be a chain reaction, too. One bank goes down, and it takes down 40 others. So you see why they cannot afford to tell you the truth. They want you to go all the way up to the brink of disaster, believing their lies. Who holds the mortgages on these homes? Have you seen any trends that these banks are trying to get out of mortgages along the coast? If you do, that might tell you something. If you know how to do research, why don't you look into it? I don't know how to do that research. All I know how to do is type in google.com and type in my favorite word, and there comes all the web pages that have it. If you're more clever than that, then you lead the way. Those biggest banks who hold those mortgages are the same people who own everything else. And they are protecting their investments by keeping you away from the truth. Disinformation, misinformation, and outright lies and propaganda are all legitimate in their eyes because they're protecting their assets. It is in their interest to wage a disinformation campaign to confuse you and deny you the truth. You might think this is very selfish and greedy, but what can you do about it? If you think they're doing it in a mean-spirited way, you can poison their well by spreading the truth to everyone you know. But I think that that will come back on you because when the financial system collapses, everybody is going to suffer. Money will be worthless. Prices will skyrocket. So it's in your interest to keep this quiet too. If this thing is up there, you're going to be able to see it soon. And since it is being pulled in by the sun, you can look to the sun for signs of it. Are there any signs of it now visible? I hate to tell you this, but yes, there are. And those images are put out by the government. They're called SOHO. S-O-H-O. -O. Soho means stereo images. And do they show it? You betcha they do. Nancy Leader's webpage, Zetatalk.com, shows you the pictures of this winged system. I can't call it a planet because it's not a planet. It's a, it's a constellation. It's a star 
with seven planets going around it, if you believe that he watched it coming in for decades with his buddies in the CIA. I just think it's an interesting video. Actually, it's an audio. The only thing you get to see is a red star, fiery hot, millions of degrees, and that's what he reports. How does Nancy Leader know that those images are Nibiru? All the drawings of Nibiru from the last time it was here show a ball and wings. And when you look at this thing as it's coming in, on the Soho images it looks like a ball with two wings. And those wings are a dust cloud, like or rings, rings around Saturn. There are seven planets in, the, in those rings. And there's a whole lot of other debris. This guy says there are trillions of particles. And a particle to him is, is a 70-pound iron rock. So how does Nancy Leader know that this object is coming in? Because she has gray friends. They're not from around here. They flew in on a flying saucer, like so many other visitors that have been coming here for thousands of years. And you can find the proof in all historical documents, wall drawings, photos taken by Billy Meyer, and the group of 25 witnesses who lived at his compound and saw the spaceships coming in for decades. There are even photos from India taken at the ashram where Billy Meyer lived in the middle of the 20th century. I think it was, I think I saw images from 1964 or perhaps 1956. I can't remember. At about 40 seconds into this audio video with the insider, the insider says that he was very excited about the article and he showed it to his family. The article said, a three-mile wave is coming in, and his family said, Don't worry, it's not for another 50 years. And then he says, That 50 years has come and gone. And so the listener is thinking, Hey, we're here, folks, if he's right. At 1 minute and 14 seconds into the video, he says, They've been watching it, referring to the CIA. And then he stopped and he said, I watched it. Now that is not hearsay. That's first-hand testimony. I watched it. This is not a man speaking in the third person. He said, I watched it. How did he get access to uncensored streaming images from the Hubble Space Telescope? He has friends in the CIA. This shows you that the CIA are the privileged class and you are a dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> they're better than you. They deserve the safety of underground bunkers, and you don't. You deserve to die. You deserve to pay for those underground bunkers with your tax dollars. Now, isn't this a fair system? Why hasn't anyone else in the CIA come forward to tell us about this upcoming catastrophe? Don't they care about us? Well, if they did tell, they might be dead by now. Dead men don't talk much. That's why the CIA kills them. Are you catching on? These bankers are serious about protecting their assets. And they would even kill to keep this quiet. This is not about protecting the people or warning the people. The people are dispensable. This is about money. Money is and always has been much more important to bankers than human lives. And those at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Chase and other Illuminati held assets are more important than your butt. When they ask you how's the weather up there, you tell them it's windy. They believe the world is overpopulated and they would like to trim down to about 500 million, which means they want to kill 13 out of every 14 human beings on the planet. Now, why would they want to tip you off and tell you the truth? If you don't have an underground bunker, you can't survive on the surface. That's why the elite built the bunkers in the first place. And they built them with your money confiscated by the IRS if you want me to be blunt about it. Have you noticed how much more desperate the IRS has become lately in the last decade as this thing got closer? They took everything the people had. 
They figure the assets you have are better off in their underground bunker than in your house on the coast because your house on the coast will not survive anyway. So in a way, it makes sense to put the money underground. And so the IRS has been extremely aggressive to the point that people thought that they have insatiable greed. I'm putting most of this in the form of questions to get you thinking because I can't do your thinking for you. And Channel 7 is not going to do this for you either. They're going to tell you what to think. It's not going to be in the form of questions. They're going to give you statements which are lies and when you get wise you're going to say, I realize that this is propaganda. All media is owned and controlled by the same insiders who are allowed to know that Nibiru is coming in as evidenced by this man's report and some have even watched it on the Hubble Space Telescope like this insider who has a heart and decided to tell us. This secret government controls the puppet president because they appointed him to that office and he obeys their commands. They told him to ram the health care bill through and he followed his orders. Now they have direct access to your veins and your parents so they can kill them off when they can no longer pay the IRS. Then they passed the law that government can kill Americans even without charges. Can you see the handwriting on the wall? Why did all of these things happen? It makes sense when you add Nibiru to the picture. The IRS getting aggressive, the passing of these laws, they want to be able to get rid of people because they're going to die anyway. Now, if you were in charge and you knew that billions were going to die, wouldn't you want to get rid of some of them ahead of time so you can incinerate the bodies? I believe they're killing Americans right now and incinerating the bodies. And I think that's the reason why you don't see homeless on the streets. Because there should be millions. If there are 50 million on food stamps, there should be another 150 million homeless. And I think we're beyond saving lives. I don't think they have any interest in saving our lives. They don't need the population in the first place and there's no place to put 5.6 billion refugees. So they created this Galactic Federation of Light and they told the people that a duplicate planet to Earth was created on the opposite side of the Sun so we can't see it. Now is that a tall tale? Talk about a nutcase. Whoever the guy was that came up with that concoction, there's your nutcase. There's your tinfoil hat. And some people are stupid enough to believe this. I believed it. So what does that make me? Never mind. Don't, don't answer that. Let's move on. Well, if there was a duplicate to planet Earth, don't you think it would have water? Why wouldn't that duplicate planet be just as susceptible to tidal waves as this one that we live on. They also told us that aliens and ships would evacuate us. This is another lie. What's the point in lying to us? They need to stall our reaction to Nibiru by giving you false hope. If most of the population thinks they're going to be rescued, what are they going to do? Absolutely nothing. And what do these controllers want the people to do? Absolutely nothing. They want you to stay on the coast until the last day. And then they'll pick you up. And when they don't, you're going to be screaming, Hey, what about us? <laughs> and they're going to say, Sorry, suckers! Just like they always do. They want to give you false hope. And if you think aliens are going to save you, forget it. They're playing you like a piano, man. This is like jazz. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> they play you like you was a piano, man. Read the Sheldon Nidal webpage, pao.com. Pow, like powerful. Pow, pao.com. And go to the bottom of the page and click on updates. You can go back six years and read everything that they've ever put out. It's all propaganda. It's all baloney. 
Every single report sounds like they're going to land on the earth tomorrow and you're going to be saved. They're going to give you lots of money and they're going to give you devices that make free food. <laughs> you're going to fly around in, in uh, anti-gravity craft. Hey, don't laugh. I believed it. I believed it for years. I was telling everybody we're going to be rescued. It's funny. Those people never believed it. They were smarter than me. <laughs> so read those reports on the Sheldon Nidal page and tell me if you weren't being played or the people who read them weren't being played. I'm telling you, they play us all like we were piano heads. Is it okay if I call you piano head? Just a friendly reminder. <laughs> Mr. Piano Head and if it's a woman, Ms. Piano Head. We should all remind each other that we've been had. We've been played by the secret government. This insider comes out and tells us, hey, I watched it. It's real. Do you believe him? Listen to his testimony and tell me if you think he's speaking from actual experience or if he's the greatest actor since Al Gore. At a minute 23 seconds, he describes this object as a solar system with planets. He talks about the debris or the trash around it. And he says the CIA told him that the average dust particle weighs 70 pounds. It's made of iron. And when this constellation comes passing by Earth, it won't be any closer, he says, than about 20 million miles. But you know, the sun is 93 million miles away. And if this sun comes by, it's going to get pretty hot here because he said it was millions of degrees hot. I think that's going to scorch the earth. I think it's going to burn a lot of things. And there are predictions that say just that, that a third of the earth would be burned as this thing comes whirling around. But what happens is the earth gets locked into position with this thing because they're both magnets. And so it probably only scorches one side of the earth. But if it is a star, a blazing hot star, and it comes within 20 million miles of Earth, it will be almost five times closer, or one-fifth the distance, of the sun. And if the sun came in that close, it would burn everything up. I don't know how much heat this thing has, but it has five times the mass of Earth, according to some scientists. Anyway, this guy says these 70 pound rocks are going to rain down on us like hail. I have never been hit with a 70 pound iron rock falling from the sky, have you? But I think that if hail can dent a car, I'm talking about ice hail, little tiny balls that land on the hood and they dent it or they break the windshield. If ice can do that to your car with little tiny golf ball size rocks of ice, then what would a 70 pound iron rock do that came in from space and is traveling about 10 kilometers a second? I think it would damage homes and buildings, cars, trucks, farm equipment, tractors, barns. Everything you need to survive should be damaged. It'll wreck all the satellites as it comes in. It's going to hit those and they're going to shatter because space is very cold, or something moving like a bullet that fast hits cold metal, it will probably shatter it. I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist, especially one who specializes in space. But the temperature out there is very, very cold, like 400 degrees below zero, something like that, Fahrenheit. And if that satellite gets hit with a rock, it's going to break it. It's going to render it useless. And so all of our communications are going to be destroyed. So it's going to be pretty rough on the surface. But if you've got a nice cushy bunker, you'll be okay. Can you suck up to anybody in the CIA? Tell them you need one of those passes desperately? Try to save one or two of your kids, too. If a farmer's tractor is destroyed, how much food can he grow for you? If a manufacturer's plant is destroyed, how long will it take him to rebuild it if there's nobody providing resources? The whole system collapses. The whole civilization is destroyed if we get rained down on with 70-pound rocks. He says there are trillions of them. He saw them. 
So how long does it take to repair a factory if you have no raw materials? If the sources of all those materials is also destroyed, how long does it take to rebuild? I'm sorry to ask you these disturbing questions. I'm trying to be positive. Here's what's positive. You're going to seek 